we have a point lying on the boundary between glass and vacuum so this is the point on which the electric field is given outside which is e not and it's making an angle alpha not with the normal of this dielectric surface we need to find the field strength just inside this glass surface and the angle that field is going to make with the same normal and also we need to calculate the surface density of the bound charges at this point so once again they have given the field just outside the dielectric it's at an angle and angle is alpha naught they need they want us to find the electric field just inside the dielectric and the angle is going to make with the normal and also they are asking the surface charge density on this region so in the question itself they have given a hint that if we are to find the surface charge density that surface charge density is what is causing the change in field so the concept we are going to use here is and how we think about it is the surface charge density is obviously normal to this so it's like this so that's going to cause a jump in the electric field just outside so if the electric field inside is let's say e then just outside the field is going to be e plus sigma by epsilon it will be more clear now but just understand this that the surface charge will only change the normal component of the field if you have the parallel component of the field that's not going to be affected by the surface charge because the field generated by surface charge is in the direction of normal that is the concept and the approach we are going to take so let's come to the diagram now so this is the we have this is the 3d diagram we have drawn a much simpler one so this is e not and it's making an, an angle alpha not we need to find what is e dash and alpha dash so we are going to break both the fields into their components now as discussed let's read also field parallel to dielectric surface does not change because induced charges affect field in normal direction only so you have a certain charge density here which is obviously parallel to the surface so it's going to affect only the normal electric field not the parallel electric field so uh, you can see the components so normal component here is e not cos alpha not this is e not sin alpha not this is e dash cos alpha dash and the the parallel component is e dash sin alpha dash therefore e dash sin alpha dash is equal to e not sin alpha not the parallel components will not change so e dash sin alpha dash is equal to e not sin alpha not field perpendicular changes by our standard formula of, of dielectric e outside by e inside is epsilon so e outside is e not cos alpha not and e inside is e dash cos alpha dash so this is a factor of epsilon here so from our first two equations we have two equations two variables variables are e dash and alpha dash so if you just divide them you will get rid of e dash and you will get the value of alpha dash if you square and add you will get rid of alpha dash and you will get the value of e dash so we have got the answer of our first part where we needed to find the field strength and the angle now the surface charge density so so let's say the surface charge density is sigma dash and let's say an electric field e was present here before the dielectric was there so once you put the dielectric then just outside the dielectric field becomes e plus sigma dash by 2 epsilon correct again let's say there is a field e present when the dielectric was not there now because we have put a dielectric here and there is a certain charge density developed here which is sigma dash so that is going to help the field outside it will increase the field outside by sigma dash by 2 epsilon which is the field generated due to a plane and just inside it's going to retard the field which is already existing so a already existing field inside was e so that will become e minus sigma dash by 2 epsilon which is e dash cos alpha dash so outside field e not cos alpha not we can write as e plus sigma dash by 2 epsilon and inside e minus sigma dash by 2 epsilon so from here we don't need the value of e so we will just eliminate e and we'll get this equation 
So here we'll get a term of e dash cos alpha dash. So we'll just replace that with e naught cos alpha naught by epsilon. And we'll get our answer sigma dash as epsilon naught e naught cos alpha naught 1 minus 1 by epsilon, which is our answer.